Think of a world without sea transport. Fruit from Costa Rica, vegetables from Belgium, cereals from Egypt, machinery from Japan, and fuel from Saudi Arabia. 90% of the world's food, fuel, raw material, manufactured goods, and almost everything we use in our daily lives depends on shipping and therefore on the unsung heroes who bring these products to our 21st century lives. The world we know today would grind to a halt were it not for those brave seafarers who navigate enormous ships through the most dangerous conditions and the roughest seas to bring us comfort and convenience without a fuss. Across the world, there are thousands of men who make personal and family sacrifices, spending weeks and months at a time at sea. The Mission to Seafarers Centre in Dublin Port stands as a physical recognition of their commitment and a haven to support them when they return weary after a long voyage. It is a place of rest where they can enjoy relaxation away from the confines of the ship and reconnect with their loved ones once again. When seafarers come here, the first thing they ask for is the password for Wi-Fi because they're trying to make contact with their families back at home. We now have a situation where we have a lobby that's open for 24 hours a day. So that's a great facility that even when we aren't here and open, they can come inside and use Wi-Fi. So that would be their first priority nowadays. It's also a nice warm environment. We have computers that they can use if they don't have their own. We have pool table, we have a television room. We have a little cafe where they can have a cup of tea or coffee which is free of charge and we also have a shop where they can buy some basic things and some confectionery and some souvenirs because a lot of the seafarers don't have enough time off the ship to go to the city. Today we are in Dublin Port down on the jetty where the zinc is loaded onto the ships for export. Dublin port is a very busy port. It's the largest port in Ireland. My job here is to visit the ships, to tell them firstly that we have a seafarer centre within the port and to give them some information, to tell them that they're welcome to come and visit us and to explain to them the facilities that we have. My work for the seafarers began back in 1988. Originally, it started by an Anglican clergyman in Bristol in 1836, who was in a parish and he went out for a walk. He saw all these seafarers, seamen at that time, in 2000, it was changed to seafarers because there are ladies on board ships. But he saw them all and there they were, away from families, sad, lonely, homeless, uncared for, unloved. He gave up parish work and he, he founded a mission and other missions started as well. But it was about 10 years later that it was brought under the umbrella of the mission to seamen. Here in the Republic of Ireland, we are proud to, to call ourselves the Mission to Seafarers Ireland. The reason for that is, while we naturally have a connection with London and we get literature and all, we get no funding from them. We fund ourselves. Now we get a selection of international visitors. A lot of the crew are from the Philippine Islands. A lot are from Myanmar. We would have Russian, Ukraine, seafarers, many nationalities. 
most of the seafarers that we would see in here, the average age is probably about 35. We have met a couple of older seafarers, which surprised us, people in their 60s. And we have had some quite young ones. And there were two in last year, and they were just cadets. And they were about 16, 17, and far too young to be away from home for months. It's not uncommon to have a, a bulk grain ship that has brought grain maize, maybe, from uh, South America. And they will have been at sea for 23 days getting here. There was a ship in at one stage and the crew hadn't been paid for three months. And their families were in really bad way back at home, mostly Filipino chaps at that time. And they were telling us about the fact that their wives were having to sell jewellery and things like this just to keep their children in school and fed. And other than getting in touch with the international trade people here, there was nothing we could do to help them. Their ship that they were on, they kept telling them, in the next port we'll pay you, in the next port we'll pay you, and they weren't paying them. And that was, that was upsetting. And they were here for about a week, so we felt bad for them. The biggest problem, I think, for seafarers is that it's a very hard and lonely life. They spend 10 months a year, most particularly the Philippines, uh, away from families. They have the isolation of being at sea for that length of time, uh, working very long hours, 12 hour a day, and they need some rest and recreation when they get to port. The amount of time they get off their ships varies according to their duties. For example, we have a regular visitor from Sri Lanka and he is an electrician on board. And most ports, he doesn't get leave because he has to be responsible for all the machinery involved in loading and unloading. But here in Dublin, someone else in the port does that job. So he gets quite a bit of time off the ship. If the ship is coming in in the morning and going in the afternoon, they may not get off board at all, in which case our ship's visitor is the only person that they would get to see. A lot of the time they would perhaps have two or three hours, which isn't enough time to get up and down to the city, so they have at least the seafarer centre as a break from that. We did have a ship that was a regular visitor to the port, and the only person who got off that ship was the captain because the crew were responsible for working on the ship when it was at sea, but also they were responsible for loading and unloading. So they didn't get off at all. And we talked about that a lot because we thought nine months of just going between three ports and never getting off the ship was really hard. I do love my job. In fact, I don't really treat it as a job. And I I'd actually look forward to coming here and... Uh, going about the port and meeting the seafarers and uh, hopefully we make a difference you know to their lives and if they enjoy the experience here they'll come back again so when we see somebody returning we were twice as pleased we should be down on our knees thanking god for so many things we have so much that we take for granted because I, I see a great need, a great want. A lot of seafarers are very badly treated, badly paid. Things are improving, but still a long way to go. Please visit Ireland Seaman Center. Very nice place. Uh, Wi-Fi, very nice. The facility is very nice. Yes. I was amazed. And people here, very friendly. Seaman's Club, very friendly. In the hustle and bustle of our lives, let us not forget the seafarers, the unseen and unsung heroes of our time, men and women who make the world a better place.